Hello everybody and welcome back to class. Before I get started on line art, I know that this is going to be a question that I get asked and that is um, what brushes do I use? If you're watching this on YouTube right now, I do stream this live on Twitch. If you're just begging to ask me questions and you need them fast, Twitch is the best place to go for answers. Anyway, here's my brushes. Okay, so first of all, I use this brush, the one that I just checked, the most. I probably use this one the most. This is my primary brush that I use for like everything. These are all in Clip Studio Paint. And then these three brushes I use for like, I just kind of play around with a bit for all different types of line art. And then these two I also use as well. Um, this one's really fun. This one right here is a good time. And yeah, so those are the brushes that I use. I'm pretty sure that this brush right next to the f right next to the one that I use the most is the same exact brush. But that's the brush that you'll see me using the most. So I'm gonna go right over to my drawing. Okay, so I haven't really scripted anything in relation as to like how to do liner. I figured the best way to teach would be to just run through it with like some commentary because usually when I draw on Twitch I don't always talk about what I'm working on and this is an illustration I'm working on but I'm just ready to do the line art for it and there's quite a bit of inking that needs to be done <laughs> this is so beautiful sensei thank you so much <laughs> it's really it's really a big work in progress there's already a billion layers some of which I don't think I need anymore what is this I might want to keep that. They are naked underneath. <laughs> they are naked down there. So I've done all the sketching already. Um, the sketches are in different layers. If you sketch in different layers, it definitely makes it easier to, to do line art. Just saying. Um, it just makes it more convenient. There's some layers that I just don't need. Like some which that are just copies of layers that I already have. So yeah, clean up your layers, and then if they're all in separate layers... Oh, thank you so much for the host, Chiaco. <laughs> if they're all in different layers, you can hide some some of them to make it easier to, to, to work on the line art that you need to work on. So I'm gonna like hide, keep the border there. I'm gonna hide most of this stuff, and we'll just focus on the figures first. I do line all in one layer for the most part. Sometimes I like to be careful and put it in separate layers, but for the most part, I just do all my line art in one layer. Okay, so I'm gonna get started right away doing line art. If you're aligning on Clip Studio Paint, if you hit P, it should take you over to your pens and you can kind of pick whatever inking pen you want. Uh, I showed the ones that I use, but you can use kind of whatever you like. It's all the same. Everyone has their own preferences. I prefer something kind of inky, splotchy, blobby kind of look. But choose what makes you comfortable and, uh, you know, the, the, the pen doesn't make the artist. The, the artist makes the art, you know. So don't worry too much about your ink brush if you are unsure about it. If you're good at making your strokes, your art will look good no matter what. The first thing that I do is I check my pen settings. I always have it on like 10 per size. And I do use a stabilizer. It's on 46 right now, which might be good. Um, I'm not too sure if I'll need to change that. I might need to stabilize more, but I'm going to just jump right into it. It's always hard to pick a spot to start, though, for inking. But I usually start from the face and then just go around. So the key to line art, and you're gonna see me undo a thousand times, a lot of people hate line art because of that. That you just have to keep making strokes over and over again and finding out where you wanna put your line and, and making it look straight and good. I just always undo until I have a line that I like. And over time you'll get better at laying down ink and it, you'll feel more confident with your lines. But for me, um, I, I still undo a billion times. Also, I forgot to, forgot to show this. <laughs> I 
For reference, <laughs> this is what my last piece that I inked looks like. These are the inks from the last illustration that I worked on. I just I felt like it was important to give a reference of what it looks like when I'm done with it, when I'm done with inking. My inking style changes all the time, so my inking might not look like this this time, but this is the last illustration that I inked and finished. So just just as a point of reference. I'm not going to be finishing this today because it's just so much inking and inking takes me the longest as I focus on it the most when it comes to my art. So just come in and lay down your lines as, you know, as well as you can and then you'll you won't need to undo so much. And my trick to line weight because line weight is very important is where there's corners, I give it a thicker line. I don't know if that's cheating or not. <laughs> All art is cheating, right? So I always give a thicker line around the corners and a thinner line around the straights. And you'll often see me come in and, you know, when I'm done inking a certain area, I'll come back in and I'll erase some of the line art to make it thinner in some spots because I feel like I always go down too thick. So that's another discipline that you could really teach yourself is that uh, come back in and thin up some of the lines so that they're not all super thick and so that your points are nice and pointy and whatnot. But that's my life hack is corners, corners darker. Corners darker than the straights, I guess. I don't know. I don't think that's an original idea either. I think that I stole that from someone, probably. <laughs> Nothing in art is original. I probably saw the technique somewhere and have been using it and don't remember its origin. But that's just the technique that I use for line weight and it keeps line weight consistent. I've also found that like using that sort of particular way of line weight has been useful for animation. Because when you're working in animation, your line weight has to be consistent, otherwise it'll look kind of crazy. So using that specific technique helps me, helps me get more consistent frames in my animation. Also, pro tip. Pro tip. This is a pro tip for sure <laughs> that I definitely want to say before it's too late. Uh, go to your sketch layer and just lower the opacity down to like 50. That way if you're right if you're drawing on the wrong layer, which I oftentimes do, you'll be able to know because it'll come out gray. I do all my lines in black. You could always color them later if you prefer a colored line art style. I just always do mine in black. You'll you'll never have an issue coloring on the wrong layer ever again if you do that. The amount of the amount of like meme tweets I've seen. Tweet Tweet Twitter memes I've seen from artists saying like the worst part is inking and line art and oh my god line art's so terrible it compares nothing to like coloring I just never understood that I <laughs> I really like inking I don't know there's just something so ch so mesmerizing and, and chill about it and zen about it and I I also know so many artists that like paint digitally and just say that they just can't do line art. Amazing painters that can't do line art. I don't get that. I don't believe it, first of all. I don't believe it. I think if they tried hard enough, they'd be able to pull it off. But seriously, I don't know. Inking's definitely the best. Plus, shopping around for like ink brushes and experimenting with different line art styles and different ways to lay down the ink and how much to use. That's so much so much fun. I get paint is kind of like the same thing, I guess, but I don't know. Also just it's just satisfying to look at, isn't it? And I think it's satisfying. And I could still ink traditionally pretty well. I actually do have a sketchbook. That's a good tip. Keep a sketchbook. It's very relaxing. It is, right? Keep a sketchbook. If you haven't- if you don't have a sketchbook, that's one of the one mistakes I see digital artists make a lot. If you don't have a sketchbook, 
I don't know how you how you could draw without any fear all the time. You know what I mean? Ske a sketchbook is there for you to draw without fear of judgment and you know whatnot. Whenever I pick up my tablet, my iPad, whatever, I always feel like there's a certain amount of pressure. The piece has to be good. So I'm using this tool. I don't know if that goes for everyone, but that's how I feel. And a sketchbook is always a good way to just, like, experiment. Paper is just nice, too. Paper is just so nice to ink on. And I've used tons of inking stuff. What is the difference between raster and vector layer? Easy ass? Oh, okay, yeah. I got you, fam. Okay, so first of all, I should have prefaced this, but I don't use vector. I use raster. I, I should use vector. Probably. But I'm not very good at vector, although I can explain it to you really quick. So first of all, this is a raster layer. And to show you why it's a raster layer, it's because when I resize this piece right here, it gets kind of blurry. If you did that with a vector layer, it wouldn't get blurry. But there's also, like, okay, so if I make a vector layer, the lines are kind of the same, right? But then you have all these extra tools that come with vector drawing. If you use this vector thing, you could move points around and whatnot. It's actually really cool, but I am just not experienced enough for it. I am not very experienced with vector, but there's a lot of fancy things that you could do with it. Another good thing about vector is when you resize the line art, say you want to make it really big or really small, it doesn't change. Um, the resolution of the line. So I don't really know how to use vector layer, but I do know the difference <laughs> between vector and raster, and I do need to learn it better. But I can't, I can't like give a solid lesson on vector until I actually get good at vector myself. Although I, that's just a basic explanation about how vector layers work. Vector is really good for line art. I do feel like I'm missing something there. Future video on how, how to use vector layer after I figure that out. <laughs> after I figure out how to use vector layer, I'll make a video on it right away. With the little experience that I gain. Right now I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush really quick. Uh, what's the one that I really like in here? It's this one. I like this one a lot. I'm gonna come in here just adding little details is something that I really like to do. It's okay if you find that annoying and you don't want to do it, I understand. But like, these buttons are definitely raised somewhat, so. Another thing with, that I do with metal, with my inking, when I ink with metal I oftentimes like, will give this sort of black line art style. There's probably some examples on it on the other illustration that I could show as well. This is a pretty good example of it though. I just kind of lay down a couple little lines. Because my coloring can tend to be pretty flat so it's always nice to just signify like oh that's a piece of metal because look at how the blacks are shaded into it. I do that for all metals, most metals, I think, for the most part. You'll probably see it on Chainsaw Man here. Yeah, it's on his little, uh, his little handles there. I did do it. And on his chin and whatnot. I didn't do it a whole lot. Uh, Aki's sword there. So yeah. Ah, it's just a trick that I use to make metal look good. So just to show how I like fill in areas with black, because I'm kind of coming to that point here. I do tend to use a smaller brush to come in here, but I fill in a spot with black and then a lot of times I come in and I just erase so I can retain some of the line art. I know it's so delicate and like, when you're really, z you know, zoned out all the way out here, it does not not that drastic, but for me, I think it's kind of important. Under the chin as well is where I add a lot of line art. Or a lot of inking. 
I just feel like this is a place of shadow. So typically I would do this after I finish the liner and you can do it kind of whenever you want. Like it, it's fine to do it now, but to lay in darker shades where that shadow might be coming in from. I do use a lot of dark, dark blacks in my illustrations. There's a lot of black here. I'm actually trying to use less nowadays, but I think that that slightly less is something that I need to do, but I don't, I don't know if I want to or not, because sometimes I like having a lot of black, so we'll see, we'll see. For the face, I, you gotta be very delicate. Sometimes I use a smaller brush for the face. Uh, what's the brush that I'm using right here? This one right here, see this? This is the brush that I use probably second most. I really like how it's square. I don't know. I just enjoy it. And it really helps build up value because it's not completely black from the beginning. So I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to do the face. But yeah, I always use a smaller brush for the face to get the details in. I tend to be a big nut about eyeliner. You could kind of, you could, honestly, you could apply, like, a, a liner in the same way that you do eyeliner. <laughs> I just follow the way that you would do your eyeliner. If you do eyeliner, I, I used to be big on wearing eyeliner. Because I would ink so much, ink so much art is my favorite thing to do, is inking art. My, my eyeliner was always on fleek, as they say. Said good, good eyeliner skills because I could ink very well. <laughs> I'm very good at making straight lines and circles, perfect circles and whatnot. All that stuff I'm very good at traditionally. Digitally is a different story. Digitally is like a little bit more difficult. See how this like, this brush is a little gray some places. I really like that. I always make, you know, the nostrils have those little shadows in them and whatnot, and the corners and, and such. It all sort of translates together. You, I, I don't know, this is more of a style thing of mine, but... Sometimes I do outline that nose piece, but I don't know if I will or not. I think that might just be something that I, like, include when I'm coloring it, rather than doing it right now. Here, though, I might. But it's so subtle that, like, yeah, maybe that's not subtle enough. I do want him to have, like, some somewhat of a wrinkle, wrinkled, tired, tired expression. I think it's important to hide your, your sketches every now and then to see how your lining is going. Make sure that it's on the right track. Otherwise, you get a little lost in the sauce. Sometimes if you have too many lines out at once on your page, your brain will, like, auto-correct to, the, to the, the, the line that's correct. I don't know if that makes any sense. But it's sort of like why you flip your canvas. Eventually, you get used to looking at, at that, and your brain will start to correct mistakes, imperfections, and whatnot. So it's important to just every now and then hide your sketch layer, like I will right now after I get my brush back, and then come in and sort of fix fix up your mistakes. Like I, I wouldn't want that. When you have two two lines touching like that, it's like a little art sin that they tell you not to commit all the time. I don't remember what the word is exactly, but you're just not supposed to do it. <laughs> lines that are just touching tips like that, apparently it's it's bad juju or something. I don't know. There's a lot of little intricacies on the face. My professor gave me good advice earlier, and I st sometimes I still don't listen to it. Like right now, I might probably might be ignoring it a little bit even. But my animation professor said, like, why are, don't add so much detail when you're not going to be seeing like an up close shot of the character. So I'm going to be all the way out here. Why am I adding all these little details? I don't know. 
Maybe I can't take my own advice here, but... You don't need to spend so much time on the intricate details if you're not going to be seeing them that up close. So try not to worry about it too much. <laughs> Always add more wrinkles to make your characters look more tired, because that's what's in these days. Kind of looks like he's crying. <laughs> but yeah, when you're zoomed out, you don't need to add all the little funky, funky details. It's just not necessary. Although, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, a hip, a hypocrite, really. I just am a hypocrite. A lot of these little spots of liner are just style, style, stylistic choices that I, that I have. And that's the fun thing about line art, you know, a lot of it is just up to your style and up to your interpretation as to how you want to do things and add detail, where you want to add detail and where you don't want to add detail. Like, maybe you want to add a little line for the eyelid or maybe you don't. So I'm pretty sure the... <laughs> if, you look, if I look at reference of Mustang. I think he he has, what do they call it, a mono eyelid? Which is a, he doesn't have a, a, a fold in the top of his eyelid. This has nothing to do with line art and everything to just do with using reference. Use reference! I'm gonna come down onto the shirt that he's wearing, his uniform. I'm gonna try to, I'm gonna try to remain focused on just sections of his figure since I don't have, you know, eternity to do this. I actually have to go early today, so I won't be able to line this whole piece. If that's something that you guys want to see though, like like an entire line art process video with commentary in real time or something, hit me up, let me know. But I, f I feel like seeing little bits and pieces of this process is really all that you need. Because I'm kind of using the same process for the rest of the piece that I'm using right now. Like, it, it doesn't change. So for these little, little doodads here... <laughs> these little doodads here... Oh, pro tip! Pro tip time! Where is it? Let me go get it. Uh, here we go! You can't see it because I don't have a webcam. So I don't have money to get a webcam, so I'm VTubing. <laughs> I have a ruler, like a real one, a real ruler. <laughs> this is the this is my my hack. You know what's so annoying? Digital rulers. Rulers are annoying. You can make okay, you can make a straight line in Clip Studio Paint by putting a dot somewhere and then hitting shift and then putting a dot somewhere else. But look at how thick that is. There goes all your line weight. Big brain, yeah, big brain mode here. The biggest brain move that you could have is using an actual ruler. I'm not even joking, I use a real ruler. It is a wooden ruler. Just sitting here, it's 12 inches long. It's a foot, foot long ruler. And that's what I use for, for drawing straight lines. Because Clip Studio Paint has a built in ruler. But it's a pain to set up when you can just grab a ruler off your desk. And, and draw quickly in a straight line. I don't see why you would ever want to use Clip Studio Paint's ruler. Or any any saw, I just don't like the ruler. See, if I go in here and I'm like, oh, I have to set up the ruler, I have to pick which ruler I want, I have to put it down, then I could come in here and then I could do the line art, but then I have to go and delete the ruler off of here in order to get rid of it, and now I could draw normal. Oh my gosh, are you kidding me? It's so annoying. No, I'm not doing any of that. I mean, I would, I just, I just can't. There's no way. So yeah, I use, a, I use a real ruler. A real ruler from the real world. Not a, not a digital one. <laughs> Out of all the things that digital art can do you, I have to say the one thing that digital art sucks at, really sucks at, is just being able to give you the ability to make a straight line without all the pain and agony of selecting a ruler from the settings and whatnot. That's the secret to digital art. That's what all artists crave, 
is to have their art look good, yet also be able to produce it quickly so they could get monies. <laughs> and while I don't, I don't get much monies, but I'm st always thinking about ways to produce art faster. <laughs> that's one of the ways. And that's where art style comes from as well, by the way. Your art style, it's really just a way that you cut corners. That's all it is. It's just, it's just the way that you hack the system. I have been uh, thinking recently about my line art, and I, I think a lot about my line art, and I think so. I oftentimes will think about how I wish I was like a digital painter rather than a line art artist. But then I think about the art that I'm trying to create and the the industries that I'm trying to break into, like animation and comics, and I and I realize, oh no, <laughs> painting is. It's not something that I'll probably be using a lot anyway. And I'm always like, okay, but I, I need to be good at digital painting in order to be a good illustrator. And I think that's false. But I always tell it to myself. I always say those words to myself. I'm not I'm a I'm a lesser illustrator because I don't paint digitally. I could paint fine traditionally, by the way. <laughs> if I really wanted to paint. I should just grab a dang paintbrush. But I don't know. That's always been something that's bothered me, but but recently I've been making Pinterest boards and following other artists that use a lot of ink and line art in their illustrations rather than painting, and I think that that's really helped. So, if you're looking to get into line art and and you want to, you know, or you are a line art artist and you're doubting the use of line art in the industry, in, in illustration, I definitely recommend, you know, making a mood board of artists whose illustrations you like that use heavy, heavy inking. And I wonder if I could find a few of those artists right now. I don't know if I have time. Maybe I'll show a few of those artists. Okay, as I was saying, I'm gonna, <laughs> I have all these artists up now. Okay, ignore Twitch, please. I'm gonna go through a couple artists here. I was talking about artists that have really good inks. And I'm gonna show you that inking can be used good in illustration. This is Alunum. Al Alunum? Al really cool artist. I mean, these are for comics, but also the inking. Oh my god, G sweet Jesus. All right, all right. Because I was thinking for a while, I was like, I don't know, is inking really valuable for illustration? This is... Goxes. Goxix. I think this guy's name is Guy. Pretty sure. Look at that. Mm. Oh, the inks. The inking. Okay, okay. We're going through these fast. I'm just going right through. We're talking about Sulala. Who's a very popular comic artist as well. Come on, look at those inks. I mean, it, it just can't be beat. Okay, I don't know what that is. But that the art is good. Okay. Nico, though. <laughs> Nico's art is not in there. It, here we go. This is good. Oh my god. Can I just talk about this? Can I talk about this piece? Can I hide the classroom for a second? Can I, can I hide- can I hide the class- the classroom for a second? Excuse me, Nico? Shit, what I'm talking about? You see this? Are you seeing this? What? Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, just fantastic artists. This is an artist that I that I also really enjoy. Their art is much different than the other artists, but I really enjoy these recent pieces that they've posted here. With this ink work has been I've been a big fan of it. And last but not least, my OG inspiration is Matthias. <laughs> I like how I'm like Hispanic and I can't pronounce uh, romance language names. This guy's use of- okay, why are we so zoomed out? This guy's use of inking, and he's traditional as well. I don't know. I'm just a big fan of it. He's got a f he's got a few pieces that I really like, but his the way that he lays down ink like that I don't know it's just so cool to me. 
I really love this piece especially. And the watercolor as well. This man, I don't know, I wish my art looked like his. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying when I say that, that inking is, is valuable for not just, you know, not just comics and whatnot, although some of the artists that I did show were comic artists. I think you could, you know, properly do illustration with ink work, heavy inking. Mati? Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chieko. <laughs> thank you, Chieko. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. It's all good. Like, I, I've been- I'm always doubting myself- why is my brush so small? Oh. I'm always doubting myself these days about my ink work and is it is it good for illustration like I've always seen painted illustrations as a step above inked illustrations and I, ne I never like understood why that was in my head but it's always been that way maybe because digital painting is not a skill that I have or something but I've just always seen it as lesser to be an ink artist, and I don't think that that's true. I think that's just, you know, cognitive distortion talking or whatever. The thicker your line art is, that's also a good spot to put um, where, your, where your shadows are. Your line art should be thicker where the shadows are casting. Also, and just, just another tip, when something's Clo coming closer to the camera, use thinner line art. Or no, use thicker line art, sorry. <laughs> it's not a technique that I always remember to use. But when something's closer, as it's getting closer, thicken up the line art. It helps uh, show that kind of depth. So right here on the hand, I might just have the line art get, get like way thicker. Because this hand is probably the most in the foreground than anything else is. And that would show that depth. Because this this piece, as flat as uh, the layout kind of is, it does have some perspective going on. I'm just trying to finish this upper body for class. For, <laughs> for all of class. Here's another thing that I do a lot. If I have something that I want to like add a certain checker pattern, and I do this for shoes a lot. For example, I think I did this for uh, Powers shoes right here, yeah. I colored in black and then I carved out the details. So I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna change my brush. I'm gonna go over to transparent and then I'm gonna just carve in the detailing. And you can shave off some of that line art. Don't be afraid to like fill in with black and then carve out the whites. You know, ink ink is it doesn't have to be so rigid. You don't have to be so rigid with your inking. When I was younger, I would always, especially digitally, because traditionally you can't do this, obviously. You can't erase your inks traditionally, but digitally you can. And when I was uh, yes, this is Roy Mustang. <laughs> this is some Full Metal Alchemist art I'm working on here. When I would when I would do art traditionally, I mean digitally in the beginning, I would oftentimes make the mistake of like forgetting that I could just carve out my line art and I, and it doesn't have to be so rigid and whatnot. I'm doing some Full Metal Alchemist uh, fan art. After I said that I wouldn't do more Full Metal Alchemist fan art. I started doing more, but... Oh well. <laughs> we might as well keep going. So I'm gonna finish up soon here, but... Uh, before I go, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that I could possibly want to say to you guys to help you get good inking. See, so yeah, I do add in those little... Uh... And I try to have them all pointing the same direction as well, by the way. Sometimes I point them in the opposite direction for certain details, but if the lighting's all consistent, I try to keep them pointed in the same direction. And something that I've learned is not to do like a whole lot of these little uh, dark, dark things. All right, I remember what I wanted to say. 
what I, what else I wanted to teach real quick here. And that was with the uh, the thread. Let me show you guys how, how I was going to plan on doing this cord. And that's actually just like being really, um, really loose with my strokes here. I thought I could make a nice kind of cord sort of shape. And I don't know if I like how that's coming out. <laughs> Another thing that I could do is I can hang on before I do that. It's okay to not like if you, it's it's okay to not like how something is coming out. Before I do that, I'm going to do some of that first. Separate separate the uh, the line art from the shadow real quick. And I'll show you what I'm thinking for this cord here. It's a nice. That's nice. Okay, so for the cord, I'm thinking I come in here and I fill it with black. Oops, <laughs> with black. And come in and like erase as I was doing previously with my brush. And I don't know if I'll like how this looks or not, but this is a technique that you could use for different things. I'm trying to get that ropey kind of feel to it. and then clean it up afterwards as well. Yeah, art art hack video coming soon. <laughs> Contain the excitement for it. I kind of like that. I kind of like it. I'll probably clean it up as we go along. But I do like that for now, so I'll do it down here as well. Oops. This is kind of this is kind of a lot of art hacks as well <laughs> in this I think this will be posted to YouTube of course just like last class although now I have to edit so <laughs> I'm gonna do uh, just one more thing here to kind of I guess show you guys what my whole wrap my whole work workaround looks like as well as like usually when I get further along in inking I will come in and I will ink those big big spaces and that's really up to your discretion like where do you think a big shadow is needed and whatnot I usually always do it in in the fold of the clothes like where it, where it turns around the body and whatnot but also I I also take a tiny brush and I do as you can see here, because I've already laid it out in my sketch. I'm going to make this brush a little bit bigger. I come in here and I just do the, f the wrinkles in the clothes as well. And I'm tr trying to learn not to overdo this kind of stuff. He does have seams in his, in his shoulders. But delicate line art oftentimes I think looks very good when it's contrasted with heavier line art. Just a, just a my kind of opinion thing. And how to get folds. I mean, when I was drawing this, this, uh, when I was sketching this, I was looking a lot at reference from the show and I would see how they drew the folds and I tried to sort of emulate their style of, of drawing in the folds of the clothes. And I'm not really using a lot of folds, because this is a very heavy and probably very thick jacket. So, not going to use a whole lot. And I believe that this is a glove, but I, I oftentimes I treat gloves the same way that I would treat hands. In which I do that little 
stylistic blocking out of things. And hair as well, you know, I've, I've always not known how I want to do my hair. Not my hair, but the drawing's hair. Over here is like good example as to how I usually draw hair. Sometimes I draw individual strands. Sometimes I black it out in black and I carve out the whites. I don't know. Recently I've been kind of thinking that I want to go lighter with how I do my, my hair. Like hair strands. I've been thinking like, oh, maybe I don't want to use so much liner. But then it could be difficult, like, oh, where where do I, like, put the line art? That's so confusing to me, but typically I come in here with a very thin brush and I just lay down some lines. And I'll, I'll, a lot of times I'll connect them to the edges and whatnot and try to get some semblance of hair going on here. Okay, so I kind of took a more, uh, I took, I took sort of the same approach that I usually take, but I think I went a little bit lighter. I could also come in here and just, uh, take the airbrush, and I thought about maybe just airbrushing some transparency into that. Just to get it, like, less, you know, dark. <laughs> but I don't want a lot of transparency, I just want a little bit. Just be like, oh, it's subtle, the hair. It's subtle lines. Look at that. So there you go. I mean, that's kind of how everything works with inking. You just keep building up what you're doing, and eventually you'll, uh, you'll get to a point where you're feeling confident. A lot of ink, ink work is just confidence, just building up confidence in your lines and, and slowly building in more detail. Like if I want to draw little lines coming across all these sections just slowly building up value and if you want you could just illustrate in black and white you don't have to add color to this stuff but yeah it's mostly confidence being confident in your strokes whatever you do don't line like this i hate when i see people do that it just looks so ugly and terrible no offense but don't don't be like uh i'm gonna draw anime boy number 55 and here's how I'm gonna draw him. Be confident. Confident strokes, bro. Confident strokes for confident folks, bro. He looks nuts. <laughs> Do that. Don't be stroke strokey with your lines. Nice, confident, clear lines. If you really are just terrible at line art, make sure that your stabilizer settings are all the way up over here. And just do some practice lines, like practice your straight lines, practice your wiggly lines, etc, etc. Get better. Confidence is key with line art. But other than that, I mean, that's kind of it. You just keep building up and eventually you end up something like this. Although I'm hoping that this illustration will look better than this illustration because I'm a learning and growing individual. Yeah, no straight- no, do you use straight lines. <laughs> Don't listen to Chieko. You absolutely can use straight lines in your art. I use a lot of straight lines. Okay, that's it for class. If you're watching this on YouTube right now, feel free to stop by on Twitch whenever you want and ask me a bunch of questions. I don't care. I'm always open to answering questions. If you're, if you're on YouTube, thank you for watching. Leave a comment if you found this helpful and subscribe and whatnot. I appreciate you stopping by. Thanks for coming to class.